what what Jesus do you believe in? Let, let me explain. We have just had Easter or Passover, and this is one of the biggest idol worshipping a year. It's, I don't think there come any other day per year where there is more idol worship than Passover. What, what do you mean? What are you saying, Torben? I'm saying that there is so many people who go to church, or now they can maybe not go to church because of Corona, but they still have that day as our day where they are thinking of Jesus. But what Jesus are they worshipping? Some many people believe in the but the what what can I call it? Can I call it the Easter eight bunny Jesus? <laughs> that sweet little bunny Jesus, Easter Jesus. Some people I, I have a picture here. Some people think of a like small Easter Jesus. Some people look at Jesus like the the crucified Jesus, but like very very religious crucified Jesus. Some people see him as the grave is empty Jesus and somehow just disappeared. But where is Jesus today? He's not on the grave. He's not in an uh, ache. He is in heaven. He is in heaven in his heavenly body. And some people have a wrong picture of Jesus. They think when they're going to die, they're going to meet Jesus and hit him on the shoulder. Hey, Jesus, my friend, I was missing you. How are you, my pal? But we see John the Baptist, John, John, not John the Baptist, but John, who was close to Jesus when he saw Jesus and described Jesus in his heavenly body in Revelation. He f fell down as dead. Why? Because this is Jesus. Not that Jesus is going, they came first time to save the people. Next time he's going to come as the judge with fire coming out of his mouth and he's going to judge the world. What Jesus do you worship? What Jesus have you grown up with? One of the biggest idols, as I say, we see today is Jesus. A wrong Jesus, a different Jesus. And let me explain. When Moses saved the Israelite out of Egypt, he saved them out of Egypt. He came and got the Ten Commandments. And you know, the first of the Ten Commandments is that you will not have any other gods and you will not make any graven image. That is the first two of the Ten Commandments. What did they do? They did exactly that. They create a golden calf. And they start to worship the golden calf. And God came down and was angry and killed many of them. But you have to understand, when they worship the golden calf, they did not say, here is Mohammed that saved us out of Egypt. Or here is Krishna who saved us out of Egypt. Or here is Baal who saved us out of Egypt. They said, here is Jehovah that saved us out of Egypt. They did not change the name, they changed the image. And they did not go to another God who did something else. They said, this is the God who saved us out of Egypt. So it was this God who did the same, they just did not change the name, but they changed the image. Now we have millions of people, billions, who, are, who have faith in Jesus. They don't change what he did. That Hey, I believe in Jesus, the one who died on a cross. So that is the same, the one who died on a cross. They don't change that. They don't change the name of him. No, it's Jesus I believe in. But when you start to talk with them, it's a different Jesus. Let me just come with him and then see where you are in all of this. If I say, hey, believe, believe in Jesus, just have faith and you go to heaven. I will not lose many people. Most people will agree with that. But if I say what Jesus said, no, no, it's not enough to have faith. Jesus said the one who believes and is baptized shall be safe. You need to be baptized also. I just lost 90%. If I say baptism is part of salvation, I just lost 90% or even more, 95% of everyone who call themselves believers. Why? Because it's not biblical? No, it is biblical. If you take the time to read your Bible yourself, yeah, but what about the robber on the cross? Hey, he was before the cross. No, he did not get baptized. He was before the cross. But just look after the cross. Peter on Pentecost said, Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. 
And then I said to Paul, stand up and was away your sins. And we can then go to Romans and Colossians and we can go to other words in the Bible and say what, see what the Bible says about baptism. And there is no outward sign that you believe and there is nothing that is just a symbol. What if I talk about repentance? It's not enough you believe. You need to repent. Turn away from your sins. Jesus did not come and save you in your sins. He saved you from your sins. And you had to turn away. Don't go back in sin. Change your heart. Change your way you loot at sins. I lost 90% again. What if I go further and say, no, you need also to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you don't get the Holy Spirit automatically. I lost other percentage. How many percentage of those people actually believe in Jesus? Understand that you need to have true, true repentance and turn away from your sins. You need to turn away. You need to hate your sin. If you go back to you, boyfriend or girlfriend or live in sexual sin or sit and look at porn on the internet and look with lust on somebody come on you are you're still in your sins and you're not under grace because you're not free from sin if i say that how many people really believe in that and how many believe really believe in what the bible says that that baptism is not just a symbol it's a washing away of sins and Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Like Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need the Holy Spirit, and we read about that in the book of Acts. There's a few percent, a few percent left. But this is what Jesus say: with the Son of God, find faith when he come back on earth. There is a big, big, big deception going on right now. I want to say to you, it's not enough to be sincere in your faith. It's not enough. I have met many Jehovah's Witnesses. They are so, so, so sincere, but they are still deceived. I met many Mormons. They are so, so sincere and even active in their faith. Go from door to door. Go out like Jehovah's Witness. They are sincere, but they are still deceived. I met so many Christians. Most are not this sincere at all. But I also met people who are sincere but are still deceived. You know, we are living in the end times and the end times start in X and we are living in the end of the end of the end times. And what do we read of a sign in the end times that many would fall away, that many false Christ would appear. But you know, false Christ would appear is not only a person who walk here on earth in his physical body, who dress up like Jesus and say, I'm Christ, or somebody who are in a church or cult someplace and say, I'm Christ, follow me. No, the false Christ is here, here in your head and in your heart. Ezekiel 14 are talking about warning about that, that we, people are creating an idol in the heart. It's in your heart, it's in your head. What Jesus are you worshiping? And it's so sad because if I make a video or, or video and say, hey, believe in Jesus, everyone would agree. But if I say, no, repent and believe in Jesus, I lost many. If I say, repent and be baptized, I lost also many. If I say, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, you shall receive Holy Spirit. Exactly what the Bible is saying. There is not many people left. I want to encourage you to really examine yourself to see if you are in Christ. It's not enough to have faith in Christ. It's not enough to have faith. You need to be baptized to be saved. Jesus said that. The Bible said it. And go after the cross, book of Acts, and see what they did and why they baptized people the same day they came to faith and why they baptized people right away, even in the middle of the night. Why did they baptize in the middle of the night? Because they believed in Jesus' word. The one who believed and is baptized shall be saved. But that is not enough. You need to turn away from your sins. And you have to have proof of repentance. If you continue in sin, you are not turned away from your sins. Jesus did not come to save you in your sin. He came to save you from your sins. But that is also not enough. Jesus said to those Wait in Jerusalem to what my father had promised. And they received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. 
Now you don't need to wait because now we are living after the cross and after Jesus went to heaven, after he sent his Holy Spirit down here. So now we need, we can receive the Holy Spirit today. And this is what we see in Acts 2, 38. That is the gospel we all should preach. Repent, turn away from your sins. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the Holy Spirit. This is the promise for you, your grandchildren, and everyone far off God is calling on. But how many preach that today? One, two percent or less. Why? Because we are living in the end time and the deception is all over. And it started on Pentecost and they have just gone down the way, down the road since that. And now over 2000 years later, you see it. 2000 years later, there is almost no gospel. There is deception everywhere. And it's not only the Mormons, it's not only Islam, it's not only Jehovah's Witness, it is Christianity, the biggest deception of all. So take this time, please. Don't listen to what your priest and your church denomination is saying. Please take this time and take your Bible and examine it for yourself. Read Jesus' words of repentance, what that is. Read Jesus' words of being born again out of water and spirit. Read his words about how he will go to heaven and send his Holy Spirit down here. And then take and read the book of Acts after the cross. How all of this came together and how the early church was preaching the gospel and how people responded to the gospel. And if you don't see that where you are, it's not the Bible that is wrong. If you are not experienced that in your life, it's not the Bible that is wrong. And, but I'm thankful that the last years we have seen many Christians born again. Oh, we have seen many Christians repent. We have seen many Christians be baptized again after they have repented because now they understood it. And we have seen many Christians receive the Holy Spirit. And I hope and believe that you and many other in these end times will hear the true gospel and also get born again. God bless you. Please examine yourself. Please take your Bible. Not just listen to my words. Don't listen to the pastor's words. Don't listen to the church denomination. Examine it for yourself. Take the Bible and read it and don't be deceived. Please, God bless you.